my name is Laura Mancini, and I recently graduated from the University of the Pacific and am currently training as a craniofacial orthodontic fellow at NYU. I'd like to share with you an interesting case I treated during my orthodontic residency under the guidance of my program director, Dr. Hisu Oh. For this, how would you treat this malocclusion series? A 13 and a half year old Asian female presents with the chief concern of underbite. Extraorally, the patient displays normal cephalic facial proportions, facial symmetry, competent lips, and a slight convex profile. Her nasal labial angle is within normal limits and her upper lies on while her lower lip lies approximately two millimeters ahead of the E-line. Intraorally, she has bilateral class three molar and canine relationships with lateral open bites. There is approximately four millimeters of crowding in the tapered maxillary arch with only two millimeters of crowding in the mandibular arch. Her central incisors have one millimeter of overbite with 1.5 millimeters of overjet, whereas her maxillary lateral incisors and premolars are in crossbite. The mandibular dental midline is deviated one millimeter to the right of the maxillary. The maxillary second molars are flared buccally and the mandibular posterior teeth are lingually inclined. The patient has lateral open bites with a deep mandibular curve of SPI. Radiographically, the patient's panorex, which was extracted from a full volume CBCT, indicates a full complement of teeth, including the development of the third molars. The patient has normal bone level and bone pattern with no significant findings. She also demonstrates good root parallelism and normal TMJ structures. Cephalometrically, the patient has a high mandibular plane angle with an FMA of 38 degrees and an SNMP angle of 50 degrees. She has bimaxillary retrusion with an A and B of 3 degrees and a width of minus 7.9 millimeters, indicating a class 3 malocclusion with downward and backward rotation of the mandible. Her maxillary incisors are slightly upright and retruded, and her lower incisors are also upright but more anteriorly positioned than the norm. There are various treatments that can be used to treat this case effectively. Some of these treatments include, first, a surgical approach in which orthodontics would be undertaken in combination with orthognathic surgery of one or both jaws. Options include a Lefort 1 osteotomy with maxillary expansion, advancement, and impaction of posterior segments, or a mandibular setback surgery could be performed. Next, a non-surgical comprehensive orthodontic correction, including extraction of the maxillary second bicuspids and mandibular first bicuspids could be performed. Another comprehensive non-surgical non-extraction orthodontic plan can include any combination of rapid palatal expansion, face mask therapy, temporary skeletal anchorage devices for molar intrusion, and class 3 elastics. After 28 months of treatment, here are the post-treatment results. If you are interested in how this case was treated, please go to the PCSO Bulletin 2016 Spring Edition for more information. Thank you.